Lost a Cast 253. I think I have that right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I have that right. I yeah, I think so too. Uh, we have a small group today. Yes, missing some of our new regulars. But we just had a very exciting experience <laughs> with the GMG Cape Ann Best Donut School uh, yes. contest. Yes, we'll get into that in a little okay. bit. That was very exciting. It is very exciting, very very exciting. We're here with uh, Stephanie Benenson. Yes, uh, she's here to talk about uh, her the project Harbor Voices. Uh, the website is www.harborvoices.com. I'm also here with my regular co-host, Kim Smith. Thank Good you morning. for coming. Oh, thank you. Good morning, Gloucester. We're going to talk about all that other stuff, <laughs> but we're gonna, we want to make sure. To, so Stephanie has a young child. Yes. So we want to get her in right now, get her, uh, in her, in. her project. <laughs> uh, could you explain uh, Harbor Voices, uh, how it came to be, and what it's all about? Sure, of course. Um, Harbor Voices Public Art is a... Um, arts nonprofit that I just launched in September. I am a third generation Cape Ann artist um, and my father and grandfather spent uh, the majority of their lives painting on Cape Ann's harbors and it inspired this piece. Um, I went to get my master's at the Rhode Island School of Design last year and when I graduated I had developed this concept for a community-based public art nonprofit. And I entered it into a grant competition and RISD funded um, this initiative for me to pilot Harbor Voices Public Art on Cape Ann. Um, RISD, would you say RISD? RISD, RISD. the Rhode Island, oh, Rhode Island School, School, of, School of Design, okay. yeah, in Providence. So um, Harbor Voices Public Art is, um, falls under the category of new genre public art. It's public art that is fed from community voices. And uh, the idea behind it is that we collect stories and we connect people to each other. Um, there are three sort of main ingredients that uh, that kind of come together to create this public art. Um, one is we are collecting ancestral and recent stories of immigration into Cape Ann. Um, oh wow, Pat Alpiaz would be very very interesting. Pat, yes, she would. One of our regular contributors who was supposed to be here today is a huge into genealogy and stuff yeah. like that. She has oh, fantastic. Too. She I, knows a lot about she it. She knows a show. lot yeah. about that. Yeah. So I would love to meet her. I've had, um, you know, I'm only one person right now at this point, but I've been doing some outreach into the public schools and um, just from people exactly as you just did saying, oh, if you want to collect some stories about immigration, you've got to meet so-and-so or you've got to meet so-and-so. And, -so. and, um, and so, when, while that's happening, I'm kind of meeting people for coffee and they're sharing stories. Stories usually, the storytelling sessions usually only take five minutes or uh, three minutes. We ask people if they if they want to contribute. There's a form on harborvoices.com where you can write a quick few sentences or you can shoot us an email and I'll meet you for coffee and we'll collect the audio of your story. That's so awesome. So I'm, I'm not a historian. Wow. You know, I, she, she first said her thing and I was like, uh, what is this yeah. all about? Because now I'm very excited. Yeah, I think it's This is wonderful. really cool. Yeah, I think um, so Can I, okay, uh, I'm gonna let you go on, but I just had a couple of things before I forget, because I will forget. <laughs> um, have you been to the Cape Ann Museum? Yes, I'm on the board of the Cape Ann Museum as well. Okay, fact. yes. Oh. Idiot, Joe. But that, okay, so it makes sense because yeah. the archives are, one, to me, one of the best resources that yeah. that I'll, that so many people don't know about, mm -hmm. like Fred Buck down in the basement there, like you have a question. Right. And the research team down in the basement is just, his wife, what's Fred Buck's Stephanie. wife? Stephanie. Stephanie. Mm -hmm. She, they're both amazing people mm -hmm. and, um, so, so okay. I spent, no, I spent a good bit of time down there in the Cape Ann Museum Library with Stephanie and she helped me out a lot and I sourced a lot of information and a lot of photography and um, post vintage postcards from the library for oh, my thesis awesome. that I included as part of this grant proposal. Wow. So there's a lot of history that goes into it. And then the other part um, of the project that I really love is that it's also ancestral hi history, but also recent stories mm -hmm. of people who have just arrived here. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I'm doing is I'm kind of making connections between what's happened in the past and what's happening in currently and connecting stories. You know, there's always a thread of commonality, I think, between a story from 100 years ago and a story from a month ago. You know, people moving here for love, people moving here for job opportunities, people moving here for educational opportunities, and to find the connections between, you know, different um, lineages and ancestries and also, um, you know, different ethnicities um, between the past and the present has been really fantastic. So we've, co we've collected 
but um, we've collected a hundred stories. Yeah. Um, the majority of them have been from younger people in the, in the community. I've been doing some um, some work, uh, visual work with um, some kids at Vet- Veterans Memorial Elementary School, and then also um, there there have been quite a few stories shared from kids at uh, teens at Gloucester High School. Can, I, is, can I make a suggestion? Sure. Okay, um, Judy Judy Van Dyke. At yes. The, have you been there? Yes. Yeah. Okay, because I mean that's all. Oh, that's a that's another right. obvious resource, right? Like right. the uh, Rose Baker Center. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so Junie was a major inspiration for me, and um, actually, a friend at the KPM Museum has just introduced me to her, and um, I'm hoping that we can talk a little bit oh, more about wonderful. the project. Well, she would probably facilitate you you meeting quite a few people. That, quite a few people there. I mean, because if you just said that a right. majority of them are younger voices. If you needed a conduit to the older mm-hmm. voices, well, Ju- right. Junie yeah, is the, like right. seems to me. Her quilting the, classes are just like filled with women, you know, and they're always talking about stories and mm-hmm. new stories, old she's stories. She's got incredible and, photographs. Back when I, when we yeah. did the block parties, she oh. had that. Remember that that video um, of I, all the all the older people. Do you remember? No, I didn't see that. I never saw that. It was in that. the beginning. You probably weren't even on the blog yet. No, it was I like when I right. when no, I when our team started the block parties. We had those the videos that we played on the on the wall, wall? on the brick okay. wall with passports was oh, on okay. Center Street, okay. and she submitted a short, and it was like a lot of these older folks, the photos that they had of when they came to this country or. Wow. Oh, I bet that was so, yeah. And she's, she's, yeah. A, she's got a lot. There. And also there's there are some tiles that I saw. Um, I, I visited Rose Baker recently and mm-hmm. um, went on a, a nice little tour, saw some quilts and also saw some um, some beautiful tiles that um, some of the seniors had made there. It's really incredible. That's really part incredible of that work. other project, yeah. right. which is yeah. almost what I thought we were talking about. Wow. <laughs> you, well, it's great. Well, so that's the thing that's you it. You know all about her quilt project. I do. Okay. Yeah, I do. I have, I, you know, admire that work a lot. And I think that that is also um, falls under the same category of public art that that this project does. I feel like this is, um, you know, this is the future of public art um, as far as I'm concerned. And I, I think that um, it's it's really fantastic when people can really reach into a community and get the voices of the community to create a piece. Mm. Um, and this piece literally is I'm, I'm sampling audio from storytelling sessions in the community um, within Gloucester and Rockport and across Cape Ann. Um, I think it's so exciting that you're doing this thanks. because I think there's so much public art that um, like if you go around New York City or wherever, people are ripping down statues of, you know, just statues are, that are meaningless or whatever to the community. This is something that will... This, this is something that will never go away. You know what I mean? Like it's like I'd much rather have public art and public funding for, for public arts go to something like this that is, you know, preserving the community in a very fresh way and bringing it out from the basement of the Cape Ann Museum and into the public eye than you know a statue by I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'm you know, it's, it was, yeah. you know, it, it's it, it now you say this right, like. Okay. It seems like everything that comes down with it's going to be a public installation of like a, a you know whatever it happens to be a sculpture or something like that. Ninety five percent of the time, there's huge outrage there's because right. everybody because right. all these people have their vision of what it should, should be. be right? But I can't under, I couldn't imagine how you right. could how the, like and it, this could not be right we perfectly to, you know appreciate embraced quilt. right like Junie's quilts you know right. what I mean exactly. like everybody can love that mm-hmm. and right. it really brings something to the community and it's really I think it's beautiful what you're doing yeah, it's it's just, oh, it's I good. mean I do think so where that, okay. oh, go ahead no go ahead where um where is the installation? Where is yeah, so um, on December 8th and December 9th from 4 to 8 p.m. in the auditorium at City Hall, um, we'll have this audio-visual contemporary art installation. Um, what it will be is it will be quotes and a piece of sound, what's called sound art, um, mixing stories and quotes together. So there'll be an audio experience and every story that we've collected, um, I've promised everyone that each story will become a beam of art and a beam of light in the art installation. So every story that's shared is visualized with either um, a laser projection or a light projection. And so it'll be um, an experiential contemporary art um, installation. So you walk in the door and you hear the stories and you can see these beams of light appearing 
from every voice in the community that has shared their stories. And we're still collecting stories and we have, I've matched the grant at this point, so Harbor Voices is going to continue into another project in the future, so I'm going to continue to collect stories and create work based on it. Based on but this story. iteration will have, we're having, um, we're doing five or six field trips with some schools on Friday morning and then Friday night um, from four to eight and then Saturday as part of the Middle Street Walk, we are right after the lobster trap tree lighting. Um, we're hoping people will come. You see that you see that lobster trap tree light up, and then you come and experience light and stories in a different, um, a different capacity at City Hall. Oh, that sounds beautiful! Cooked. Wow, this is amazing. Yeah. That this is amazing. What um, wow. is is it going to be on a loop at City Hall? So yes. Yeah, so if you the, don't if you don't happen to catch yeah. it at the beginning. So the audio track is it's not a four it's not a four hour commitment, right? It takes. Okay. I'm telling people. So the field trips with the schools that I'm doing are thirty minutes. Okay. Um, it takes probably 10 minutes, it's a 10 minute loop. You can stay for two loops if you want, you can stay for one, but you go in, you hear the stories, we're creating an experience where you can get a sampling of, of I would say the majority of the voices that we've collected. Um, and and then you can go on your merry way, hit dinner or whatever, you know, it's not a huge commitment, it's only a half an hour time commitment. And earlier in the evening, we are doing a, a special thing for um, people bringing families to the auditorium. So kids will be given their own lighting element, whether it be a flashlight or a laser, so that they can create their own beam of light to shine within the stories that other people are sharing. So that part of this is that, you know, when Part of the research that I did when I was at RISD was that when, when kids look back on their own personal histories, they feel more grounded in a community and they're more likely, they're, first of all, it builds re resilience and um, self-esteem, but also um, they become more engaged with their community and they feel part of a bigger conversation about local history. Um, and so we want families to come and the kids to shine their lights around and, and to sort of understand that they're a beam of light, that their story, you know, their story is just as important as the stories that they're hearing about their ancestors. It's going to bang it home for them. Wow, that sounds That's so what I'm hoping. Yeah. 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 yeah, reinforcing that. So Amazing. Really? Amazing. I'm so glad that you so came exciting. here. I had no idea what we were in for. Yeah, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> Harbor Voices. I mean, you know, yeah. who knows what it could be? Harbor Voices. So right. It's just yeah, like, right. It's just a, you know, Harbor like, Voices. Oh, it sounds right. nice. Right. You know? it's, but it's, I do love but, the name. Actually, I really do love the name. So, is Harbor Voices the name of this show, or the, is that the name of your nonprofit? Like this the is the umbrella. name of the nonprofit. Profit. And okay. so, what I'm, I'm, okay. I'm waiting for the piece to. I, I'm finishing the audio piece right now for the installation and finishing the plan for the lasers and the lights. And once that's done it's going to receive its own title but harbor voices is okay. you know that's the name of the public art initiative yeah yeah fantastic anything you want to add in closing mm -hmm. i had okay uh, just so anyone that's listening to this www.harborvoices.com that's that simple you can yeah. go check yeah. out mm -hmm. in more in depth for yourself yes. yeah. and the dates again december 8th and december 9th from 4 to 8 p.m at um, in the Kairos Auditorium at City Hall. And also, if you want to follow our progress as we we're creating the art, we're um, posting on Instagram very regularly oh, now. what are you on um, Instagram? At Harbor Voices. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. I'll follow you right now. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, guys. This is great. That was awesome. Oh, I thought it was so interesting. You know, she said, so she had contacted me, I don't know how long ago, it was a week or two ago, and asked to be on the podcast today. And I said, yeah, and I heard the name of her thing was Harbor Voices. And in my head, you know, it's like, oh, it's another, you know, <laughs> it's another, <laughs> you like, know what, you another know. cute, you know, thing. <laughs> right. And then she talks to us about the yeah. whole thing and played it. She played us a little snippet that yeah. we're going to share. Uh, Which soon. is just that little bit was beautiful to hear. Yeah. yeah. And then we yeah. grasped what it's all about. And yeah. it's really, really a cool It's very idea. special, I think. It yeah. is. It yeah. is not It is not to be missed. You know what? If you're a graduate of Rhode Island, Rhode Island School of Design is like the top school of design in the whole entire country. So, is that true? Yeah. Or one of two. Not, is, the, not, not the New York Institute of... No, Rhode Island School of Design. Really? Yeah. So, you would think. Right. So you, you would think, I mean anybody who's just gotten their master's degree there and then being supported with a grant from the school that's you know, serious business that's serious so, yeah yeah credentials yes serious credential credentials <laughs> flying out her butt <laughs> that was awesome she's a really she seems yeah, she she's, she's, she, she's a sense my impressions from of her very sincere person and also just you know and very passionate about passionate it. and in it for the yeah. right reasons yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. 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 Really. Well, when she mentioned that her um, father and her grandfather were painters, I'd like to find out more. Yeah. yeah is right. that her married name or I mean, wonder how we can find out more about her um, well you, you'll be able to, you'll, if you follow her on Instagram mm -hmm. you can send her a private message and, oh, yeah. and do a little bit more investigative oh, thing and you know maybe idea. if you want to take the lead on this yeah, and she has any stuff that you want to post like uh, oh, okay. make posts or yeah. whatever I'd love to <laughs> the okay, pen is lighting at? up. It's distracting. Um, is that a laser pen? It is a laser pen. I don't oh, know. Why we, is it we needed to use it for the, for the testing because oh. we just got done with uh, oh, the GMG God. Cape Ann Best Donut contest. I know. That was pretty intense. Well, there was a um, intense competition. We started last week. We put out, uh, and it was sticky to the top of the blog, that we were going to take the top we, I said originally that we're going to take the top four nominations for best uh, donut. Donut, right? And as it turns out, the nomination period uh, came through, and it was overwhelming that it was overwhelmingly uh, Brothers Brew was the people's champion. They they mm -hmm. garnered twenty eight votes. Uh, wow. The next close uh, ones of the people's the people's champs were. Donut Gyms with seven, and Market Basket got two votes. Oh, okay. Then huh. Zeke, Zeke's got one vote, and mm. Willow Rest got one vote. Mm. Mm. We, we we didn't include them because right. one vote one vote is, is not yeah. enough to right. warrant. And and, like and Willow Rest, I've had Willow Rest, the little cider donuts that they right. make there. Yeah. They're phenomenal, right. but it's a it's Are not they, a donut shop. Right? You know, it's Do not they a make them all year round? Also, they, they may, may they may, okay. but it's still it's they're not a donut shop. You know what I mean? This is like yeah. supposed to you know, um, be an example of like a bakery kind right. of type of place. Right. Uh, and Zeke's is a coffee shop, so they're not known for their for their donuts. So so no um, no slight no slight them. meant for anybody. So, oh, because also last stop, she makes really good donuts. But then, um, but no one right. No, one no but I mean, I'm saying, but she only makes them like sporadically. Like she'll make pumpkin donuts or cinnamon donuts at this time of year, but very sporadic. Yeah, no, so. you can't. Yeah, yeah. So you, you want it to be have, more of a right. So anyway, um, I want to thank our judges, my nephew BJ, uh, Wayne Berger, James Eves, and Craig Kimberly were the judges. Um, we voted on uh, texture, uh, a, a potential uh, zero to ten points for texture, a visual presentation, um, uh, one to fifteen p potential points, and taste, zero to fifty potential points. Um, in first place, uh, Brothers Brew with 296 total points, points? absolutely yeah. <laughs> devastated the competition. Uh, second place, um, second and third place, might as you might as well call them a tie, but five only five points separated them overall. Market Basket with 255 points. And donut gyms with two hundred and fifty points. Okay, well, so very close. Very close. First, very close. second, and third place. Yeah. Very close for second yeah. and third place. There was no there, again. There's no losers the, right. to be nominated. Right. Just like they say, the cliche of the Oscars. Yes. Just to be nominated, nominated. It, you're a winner. Yes. Um, but the over. But 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 taking home the People's Choice based on nominations, Brothers Brew, and that carried over in the taste test. Yes. Oh my goodness. So there you go. I'm sorry I didn't applause. I'm sorry I couldn't get extra brothers bro today. <laughs> For me. Uh, well, no, I was very no I was very what, why okay, I'm gonna let you answer this. Why would I be disappointed? <laughs> because they did not have the today, they sometimes they make them, sometimes they don't, is the maple bacon donuts. And I asked if they had one this morning and they hadn't made them today. But um, Which is astounding to me. <laughs> they don't make them every day. And so also because they sell their donuts so quickly, like um, I could only get four Brothers Brew donuts, cinnamon donuts, because they um butter only, crunch, butter crunch yeah oh, excuse me butter crunch because they the other ones weren't ready yet so they just they had sold a couple of trays already and so they were waiting for more to come out so i have to believe that we put over a thousand dollars into brother's brew pockets, <laughs> pockets. over pockets. the past week yeah with the the nomination, between the, fit, the nominations right. the continual updating of yeah. the spreadsheet yes. and the facebook presence there were so, how many people said, "Where's Brothers Brew 
what's Brothers Brew, True, right. where it right. is, and it's a, it's, saw the, the right. overwhelming response over it, right. and that puts it into people's heads. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, I mean, it, if you're in Gloucester, you, you know, wouldn't actually think of making a special trip to Rockport. Except right, for oh, yeah. You, except for if you're me, and I do make special trips over to Rockport. Well, there's a lot of people that don't go over the bridge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, and, they, and, they and don't, don't leave. They don't the opposite direction Yeah, you know, there's quite a few. <laughs> but, but, so, in the past, um, I'd say in the past two years, it seems, maybe three, there's been this kind of thing of like gourmet donuts like like yeah. more in the cities the big cities like what's oh. the name of, what's the name on that uh that jug right down there you okay. can probably see it from where you oh, are union square donuts union square donuts okay. um, live goes to uh donut planet planet donut is in, that in boston no that's in new york city planet okay. donut I mean, yeah. i'm just saying it's like but know, there's there are these the donuts there are like seven dollars <laughs> It's right, like, and sometimes she brings them home, and I'm like, "Why? I don't want you to spend that kind of money." Brothers right. Brew is just, just as good. <laughs> right, right, yeah. I mean, yeah. when I, when I would have, you know, I never really kind of took note until you brought that time that maple bacon donut for <laughs> right. Brothers Brew. And then I was like, oh, "Wow!" Right. You really stood up for attention for that one. <laughs> you know what? So what? What really stood out to me was. Um, that I, I really believe that there there is room in this town, in the town of Gloucester, mm -hmm. for a gourmet donut maker. Oh, like in New York City or Boston? Hmm. Like you, in Rockport. Oh, like, like in, in Rockport, like in, right. Yeah, right. Like, well, like, well, well, the thing is, like at Donut Planet and Union Square Donuts, it's donuts. Donuts, donuts, donuts. Like Brothers Brew has a wonderful like coffee shop. They sell tons of other kinds of baked goods too, and sandwiches. Yeah, well, donut, and like I mean Dunkin' Donuts, which didn't get any nominations, but they they have oh, yeah. they're called Dunkin' Donuts, but they right. also have croissants and they right, have right. bagels and they're, they have all. Did you know they're stuff. actually thinking about changing their name and dropping the donuts and just calling it Dunkin'? Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah. Nothing would surprise you <laughs> with them anymore, though. <laughs> No, Nothing seriously, would surprise me I don't think they should do that. But I think that's ridiculous. <laughs> I think that is. I think whoever, like marketing wise, is thinking of doing that is is they, ridiculous. I think they've tried. What is the I purpose? Think, right. I think they've tried it on in a few places. I don't know if they've decided what they're going to do. Kind of silly. Yeah. Um, but you know what the reasoning is? They call it Duncan. Then that means you can dunk anything, not just the donuts. You know what I mean? I guess I don't know. That's, that's so outrageous. Like, do they need to do anything? <laughs> like, you know, they already have them on every corner, <laughs> right. um, and there's people that still go there, uh, which is, you know, whatever. People are entitled to go. So, right have there. you been to Union Square Donuts? I have it, Janet. Uh, hashtag hashtag Jan Jan. Oh. She's a friend of the friend of the podcast, a friend of the whatever, and she uh, brought us down the wharf she brought us a, a jug and a couple of the donuts oh, okay. and they were, they were like they? they were on the on par with, with brothers Brew. with brothers Brew, so, okay. which was which kind of like le and then i've heard of and i can't think of the one in boston there's a couple places in boston that are doing these upscale donuts, donuts okay. i should mention also george schlichty and a couple of my lobstermen that are uh, a couple of my other lobstermen that are from like the marblehead area uh -huh. uh, in the hunt area uh -huh. mentioned Cane's donut in Saugus, and I had heard in town a lot of other people had mentioned Cane's donut to me. I had never been there, mm. but um, I wonder if they're close because I'm always going back and forth to Boston. I think it's one. in a weird location. It's been there for like 50 years, but they oh. all rave about Cane's. I don't. Okay. I, I don't. I've well, never been there. Next time I'll. Next time I'm going that route from back from the Kendall Hotel to Gloucester, I'll I'll um, put it on my maps and just see if it's anywhere nearby. I think it, I don't think it's I think it's um, you know the Saugus uh, the from you know the the, the causeway between the airport the Rotary oh, yes. and and yeah. Lynn. Mm -hmm. I it's believe it's like there. down that causeway going towards oh. Lynn it, in that kind of neighborhood like you know one of those lefts right there before oh, you get okay. to Lynn. All right. Hmm. All right. Interesting. Okay. It's not that far off, but okay. it's, I may not be. All right. You know, well, we'll, we'll I mean, it would be yeah, great if, any, if in your travels. Right, yeah. yeah. I know you would like that if I, um, you know, not that you're a super donut I'm person, not a big donut guy. <laughs> I ate one of those donuts. I'm like, oh, oh I'm, I'm struggling yeah. right now. Yeah. Oh. Um, but anyway, it was great. It's great to have all those guys in the room. Say that on a donut cast. Well, I mean, it's, I, some people just. 
Yeah. I love but Brothers <laughs> Brew. How many times can I say, hey, right. I love Brothers Brew Maple Bacon Donuts? <laughs> Two bites of it, I'm good. <laughs> right. But it is amazing. Yeah, you know, is. They are amazing. Uh, to me, if I had my vote, that Brothers Brew Maple Yes. Uh, maple bacon donut. There's nothing I've had any donut, any, anywhere, any donut anywhere that would compare. Well, that would have been funny if um, I brought six of those for the for the judging, wouldn't it? Like, I it, have a feeling if you brought those, uh, I don't know. Everybody, who, who would, be anyway. everybody would be in a coma. Everybody would be in a coma. So, uh, Stephanie. So we're going to go back to Stephanie. So when you know she left because she had her child to take care of, uh, the girl that's doing Harbor Voices. Um, but she had mentioned that she had to get to today was her child was at Cape Ann Lanes for a bowling birthday oh. party or oh, something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But we just want to do a shout out to Cape yes. Ann Lanes because yeah. they really... It's super fun. Like it's I, great. I don't know what it looked like before. I've only seen it in the new... You know, yeah, it was cool. It's always cool to have every yeah. community that has a, a functioning bowling well, alley. Yeah. It's, it's a cool it's thing lucky. to have. Right, it's lucky. And we had it growing thing. up, which is yeah. nice. Yeah. But these people just took a kind of a dated, a little bit you know uh rough around the edges because they're just you know old yeah. people who had it, owned it forever they got kind of towards the end of their cycle of being there and hadn't freshened it up in a, in some time and these people took it over and really freshened it up and and modernized, yeah, modernized. it and uh it's just right. we're, we're so blessed to have it in yeah. our community and it's such a great place for birthday parties right. for kids, kids. kids you know, just to go it. there when you have young kids and you're looking for something to do right. it's, it's one certain, of those great things it's at certain age like what would you say like three to you know i don't know like all the way up to you know like, something that's, bowling is kind of i mean you lose once your kids get to be teenagers they don't want to hang out with you anyway right, right. so, so it's yeah but it's a great place for them to go with their buddies between right. that time so yeah, when you're right. younger you go with your kids then right. they get to be a little bit older it's the kind of place they can go right it's a safe place to drop them off yeah middle yeah. school you yeah. text drop them off for a couple hours the parents go run some errands come back and pick them up and then you know maybe like Maybe it's not cool for them when they're in college or whatever, and then they come back, and then they have their own kids. And they have and kids, and then the recycle back. starts up again. Right. Just like Fiesta, the different, the, yeah. the different cycles of Fiesta for someone. Like you're a kid, and you like it's you know the rides and the yeah. and all the stuff, and then you know walking in the parade, and then you know you're then you get to be a teenager, and it's all about like drinking on the beach and, <laughs> right. and making out with that girl for the first time, you know, yeah. watching the fireworks and. And uh, you know whatever, and coming of age, and then it gets to be of drinking age. Then you're in the you're celebrating in the bars, and and maybe you're rowing, and or or walking, walking the greasy pole, right, or right. you know all that, all the testosterone and estrogen that's <laughs> raging during <laughs> fiesta. <laughs> and then you have kids, and then you're taking them. You know it's that cycle. It's, it's the so same funny that you said that because it's like at the perfect time of year too for all that testosterone oh, and estrogen yeah, because it it's like. The summer, the winter's over. This, you know, it's just probably like I wonder if there's a lot of babies been born in Gloucester. Oh, if you counted June plus nine months, you know what I I'm mean? Sure, like, yeah, July, I'm August, sure, September, like, October, November, December, January, February, March. I mean, if there's a lot of March babies in Gloucester, I bet, I bet, I bet. <laughs> no question. Yeah, that is always like a. Yeah, you know, it's just like when you're in. Co remember when you're in college, um, and you and you know it's all cold and misery everything's wet and everything else and like you get that random one 73 it's degree really day good. in like april yeah. after you've been holed up all year <laughs> yeah. and every kid is outside <laughs> like like sun tanning <laughs> and throwing frisbees right. and like yeah. that day is yeah. like that night that's awesome yeah everybody's getting laid that night you know it's just <laughs> that's just the way it is and, and it's like everything is just raging yeah. like you know you go go you know and then when you get out of college you know, get out of college and you're you that's the like on a weekend day say like say you get a really warm marathon monday, monday. oh my right. god right. forget right. everybody's getting everybody's laid. outside everybody's yeah. getting laid yeah. um so i'm thinking everybody's outside and you're thinking everybody's getting laid no because they're outside watching the marathon at the bars on boylston street or, or along the parade route you know and then you know one thing leads to another and it's just like forget about it lights out uh so there's that um the uh, we announced the winners uh you went to the dead in the water um oh yes very outstanding thing. It's, uh, you want to talk about the filmmaker? Yeah, the filmmaker um, is David Whitcower. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, 
but he is a, um, a very successful documentary filmmaker. He's from Rockport, and that's why the film was premiered at Rockport High School. And several years ago, he premiered his film about the Coast Guard, um, even though it was about the Co a Coast Guard story in um, San Francisco, he still premiered it in Rockport, just because it's his hometown. Mm -hmm. So um, if you go to his website, which I put a link into yesterday, and I will to on the post today, if you go to his website, you can learn more about him. But it's just very, uh, did an outstanding job, and makes you want to, um, you know, get behind the uh, community and help with what's going on. So there, you um, go. there we go. All right. You had, I think, one of the posts of the week with the North American River otters last week. <laughs> it was yeah. so the photos yeah. you got captured yeah. were awesome. It, it was took so a, great. Thank you. It took a while to get those. The, they were very elusive, the otters, but and they don't show up regularly at the same time in the morning so you could be standing there for three hours waiting for the otters to come but um and it was just wonderful to see them like go from eating little frogs and tadpoles to suddenly like catching these big giant eels i mean the eels were like three and four feet long and i didn't even know there were eels and the day before when i when i was filming like i was standing in the tall grass where then the next day they were catching the eels and i was like <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> Would you have like waders on, like um, hunter boots or something? No, sometimes I'm like just have flip flops on because oh, really? I know. But and I'm gonna feels uh, like yeah, like I didn't biting. right now. I'm gonna be wearing waders because everybody's always like. But you know, the reason why I have flip flops on a lot when I'm filming in the summer is because if rocks get st if sand or rocks get stuck in your shoe while you're trying to film, it's so so irritating. But with flip flops or you know like sandals the sand just falls out you yeah, know what i mean yeah. so anyways but next next year i'll be um wearing waders i think so but anyways they're they're beautiful beautiful creatures they're so beautiful. so fun to watch yeah they're really fun to watch and they um they play with each other they have a whole you know push each other off of things and and one will hang over you know that wooden crate thing it looks like a wooden crate but it's actually an old uh, farm structure they'll hang over that and play kind of hide and go seek with their siblings i mean it's just really it's beautiful to see but one thing i did want to mention is since i put that post up people have been saying that they are seeing them everywhere like friends wrote in from wheeler's point anna squam rockport um different areas of west gloucester so you know we're very all we're connected with all these wetlands around here so it's very easy to see how because where are all those so for example those two families that i was filming in rockport they can't just stay in that one area because there's not enough food to support them so they have to spread out you know what i mean so it's very you know we could just be seeing them even more so it's very what, exciting what's cool to me about one of the main things that's really cool to me about the blog is we have a we have a timeline of documented yes stuff stuff for wildlife it started yeah. ten, 10 yeah, years that's right i can clearly point yeah because we're recording all this stuff and there's okay. dates on all these posts right. and stuff like They're that all dated. in a, a 10 almost a t in another month it's yeah. going to be it's going to be 10 years oh seriously wow. yeah december wow. 29th wow in another month it's going to be 10 years and there's such a clear explosion in certain populations that have happened yeah. in our lifetimes in 10 years in, 10 in our years, lifetimes right. the herons right. are an example yeah. the the black crowned night herons yeah. another example the snowy egrets the snowy egrets the gray egrets seeing the um, uh, beavers well, the, beavers. the beavers, beavers is one um, the so otters at the is I, like I feel like it's in the beginning it's stages the beginning. of a resurgence, but it would not surprise me if five years the coyotes obviously right, coyotes. Huge, huge explosion in huge in, in ten years right. um, all over coyotes yeah what there was one I oh guess what else I saw over in West Gloucester a mink have you ever seen so a I wouldn't mink? know what a mink looks like like I didn't know I didn't know like I was with Liv and her friends and they wanted to see the otters and you're sure it wasn't a uh, a I'm uh, just positive you know what Is I was it, gonna say. Uh, well, beaver or weasel? No. No. Uh, what's the the 
really sharp fangs, and uh, they said they're in the same family. Oh. Fisher cat. No, it wasn't Fisher cat. They look Fisher, similar though, don't yeah, they? No, well, the mink was long and skinny. Okay. And Fisher cats are a little stockier. Around. Yeah, stockier. So um, no, it definitely was a um, mink. And because I was with the Liv and her friends, and um, we all saw it run by, and they were like, "What is that? What is that?" So I found um, images of it, and we all confirmed that we'd seen yeah. mink. So, um, but that was very exciting. I'd like to see more minks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So a lot of people. I think it's com I think it's confusing for people. Like one of these days, once I get enough photos, I'm going to put up a post. So because a comparative size post, because otters are the biggest. You know what I mean? Then beavers, and then minks, and then muskrats. You know what I mean? So I think it would be good for people to see that. So if they see something in their yard, it can help them identify it. You yeah, know for I mean? sure. So, but I think it's so exciting. People are seeing them everywhere. <laughs> and you've seen them in the. These are all sightings at fresh water, but they do go and they do spend a good deal of time in salt water. And you've seen them in salt water. Where you where you're seeing them, it's salt water. Right, you've seen them. A I, times. I saw them. Yes, I yeah. saw them. Tw you know, twice. twice. Like at least three years in between each one. Yeah. Um, but uh, just a st unbelievable. Um, like to see them and the way they played and interact mm -hmm. was unlike anything I had seen uh, in the past. Yeah. Just yeah. incredible, incredible, and and like, I wish that there was a a place out in the wilderness that you could put a huge light lucite box with a viewing station that you I could sit in there <laughs> and just watch, and just watch, watch otters them. like yeah. play around because play they're, so, they're that cool yeah. we're gonna get off of the otters okay. right now because I, I we've well one thing about. I would just like to say is I mean we sh it's kudos to Cape Ann that we have this resurgence of wildlife because if our if our water was polluted we wouldn't be having if our wetlands and waterways were polluted we would not be having this research there's definitely so, yeah. Yeah, there's definitely something to it and yeah. and that must be with the mandated sewering uh oh, yeah. it, it, that has to be that has to be because everybody used to just dump their poop and and their, uh -huh. their and along with their poop was their D detergents, detergents and everything else right. that was going down the drains right. and that and would be that, very and that would be toxic harmful. and stuff like right. that right and right. then now with you know there was a i don't know how long ago but it was like the i think it was the i think i don't even think it was from the state I it, it may have been for the state but it may have been federal, federal mandate that came down that said you can't do what you're doing, doing you can't just right. pollute right. you know right. you, this has to go through right. some type of system i yeah. someone could speak mm -hmm more clearly more, to right, it but i know right, that that was a right, that's that, would, that would be an interesting podcast i think or yeah, a podcast guest yeah, yeah. um huh. so, so i'm gonna talk about this because i think it's it's funny and we're gonna say it's it's definitely funny and i'm I, i'm glad for a, a listener that has a, a sense of humor and and everything else i got the email and, and 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 it speaks to what we've spoken about a million times about how diverse our readership is <laughs> I know what you're you know what I'm gonna talk about. Oh my God. So I sent it to because I took I took the thing and I sent it to you because <laughs> the so, butterfly person, the butterfly person, person who so, doesn't like butterflies. He's right. not a butterfly person. He's right, right, right. So this, right. So right. I'm gonna. I'll, well, he's not anti-butterfly. He just thinks I'm posting too much about butterflies. But but okay. But let me okay. So let me okay, put so. out the whole thing. So so I get this email, and the title in the post in the email <laughs> is butterfly, and the and the person just simply says. Can we slow down already? Enjoy your blog daily and have so for years, but this is getting painful. <laughs> like hangover and the squirts in the same day painful. Thanks. And I and I really didn't understand what he was talking about. I go, I don't understand. Do you mean the butterflies bother you? And the, the person replies, all the stories on the butterflies, too much. Very nice lady, but come on, man. <laughs> and so my response to him, because this is something that comes up online all the time. I go, it's really fun. It's funny to me that it drives you that nuts that you can't scroll past those posts like I do. Do you think I give a fuck about the butterflies? <laughs> we, have a di we have a very diverse group. Some people hate all the stuff that I write. I'm s and I get, and there's people that whenever I post something that I think is really fun, I, I'm going to elaborate. 
but you know, sometimes I, I write something that I think is really funny, and I get it, and people say, "Why? What's wrong with you for writing that? This is unbelievable. This is disgusting, or whatever." I, I wrote, so I wrote. I, I continued on saying, "I'm sorry it bothers you so much. Believe me, as many people that can't stand the butterflies, there are that many more that live for it, yeah. and it's true because." A testament to your fundraising for your film, there are there's been more of an outpouring of support for this film yeah. than probably anything else, maybe in line with Felicia's book, yeah. right? So, uh, but other than that, there's nothing that compares to the the support that you've received yes. for and this film. The people that are that right. wait and ang and and if there was nothing else but your posts on butterflies, <laughs> that would be enough of them yeah. on the blog. But the reason Good Morning Gloucester has the huge readership right, yeah. it is is because it's there are posts right. that some people really love that yeah. they might find me funny yeah. there's some people that love art stuff of what Catherine posts about and you know all the interesting stuff that she writes marty and bridget and nicole yeah. nicole stories about her family yeah, and the stuff that she posts yeah. i mean uh, charlene and donna how they're always at all these local events and covering them for us yeah. you know i David David's man on the scene and right. Manny Simos's uh, smiles, you know smiles, smiles series. Yeah. There's all this awesome stuff, and that's what makes Good Morning Class. I, I, I agree. But I just thought you know. I know. And, but the guy so the guy wrote back. So they got after all that writing back to him. Like I, I find it funny that it drives you that nuts that you can't just scroll past right. it. Yeah. And, and he writes back. That was a great fucking answer. Sorry, yeah. Which I was so happy yeah. that he yeah. wrote it back there yeah. that he got it. He gets he it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I just have to scroll past this. You know? And mm -hmm. he's not saying, screw you. I'm not going to come back to the blog anymore. Right. He's like, yeah, maybe yeah. I can. Maybe uh, I am being a little over. Maybe I can scroll past. Yeah. Because you know what? For me, like for me, I worry about that sometimes. Like, you know, is this too much? Because people send me articles all the time about butterfly stuff too yeah. and so i have to figure out like how much Balance, of it yeah. Yeah, how much of it i can post and yeah. it's just really i don't want to but for example this year like this was a phenomenal monarch migration so we haven't seen anything like this in 5 years so if you went back last year i hardly posted anything about monarchs you know right, I mean? right. or the year before whatever. well we were actually talking about you were you were scared because there were so few and you're thinking, yes, oh, yes. is this in direct yes. correlation yeah. to Monsanto? Yeah. Well, there is that. There is all that still going on, and the the population swing fluctuates. And people need to know: in the '70s, they counted the butterflies in the billions. Yeah. And now they're only counted in the millions. So when you have these, you know, uptake. But if you took it, if you took it just based on last year. And right. you extrapolated this is well, directly because of that and then you yeah. have this and you, yeah. if you just had last year's data and this year's data right. then you would say yeah everything what a resurgence right. everything's it, great right because that article that you sent me that i didn't post the reason why i didn't post it was you know doom and gloom about the butterflies going extinct which isn't exactly good science anyways because they'll never go extinct we might not see them in the numbers that i mean i shouldn't say never but they're not on the on danger of being extinct because there are many from the North American population, many have repopulated all over the world. There's some, there's North American butterfly population in New Zealand. There's a North American butterfly population in um, Hawaii because they've been blown offshore or whatever. But my point is that that article that you sent me was actually, I was thinking about posting, and then I saw that it was from 2016. So you see what I mean? So, so things yeah, come, right, 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 right. Things come up for people online, and they think it's current. This is I've been tricked like this before. You think it's current, right, right, but the right. article's from like four years ago. So right. you know, you just have to be very careful. But anyway, so I I'd love to meet our the guy who wrote. I really I'd like to thank <laughs> this, and, and I'd like him to know that I do worry about this as well. Well, I I wouldn't worry about yeah. it too much because yeah. I think he got the point. Yeah, and he was cool about it. He was which very was cool great, about it. You know. Right. That's why I told uh, I was, you. You know, I was hesitant to, to forward no, that to you, I, I, but I, I was like, I was hoping that you would get the humor yeah, in it. Yeah, I do. And, you know, but it also keeps us grounded and, yeah. and like, oh, you know, maybe, yes. you know, yeah, I have I, to be cognizant of this because right. sometimes I right. have to pull myself in off of certain things that I'm doing, you know. Yeah, or you know, we tr I try very hard to create a balance, and I would just like to say we've been writing a lot about monarchs this year, but that's because it's really been i mean there's been no monarchs to photograph the last years so yeah, yeah, you know, there you go. so
Uh, so there you go. Uh, yeah, yeah. You went to the Cape Ann Farmers Market. Uh, um, oh, winter Market. What do they call it? Harvest Fest. Harvest, Harvest Market. Harvest Market. Market. And the next one is going to be called something else, I'm sure. It must sure. be Christmas because yeah. it's December. Holiday. You can't say Christmas. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> right? Um, that's on the 23rd of December. And that might seem late, but the, the Farmer's Market is very food oriented. Right. So you could stock up on your for food for your holiday dinner. And this is at the <laughs> UU? It's at the UU. Okay. It's a short short little window of time, 10 to 1. I wish I could have stayed, but I was running home to babysit. And so I just quickly ran in, said hello, took pictures, and ran out. But, but you also, so it was awesome. You I mean, mentioned that the one that's coming up yeah. um, is going to be... Um, on December 23rd, Third, which right. is two days before Christmas, right. obviously, the day before Christmas Eve when people are buying a lot of stuff for their for their oh. holiday uh, dinners. Right, and it's last, and also, it's kind of close to Christmas, so if you need any last minute gifts. Mm, exactly. You, because there's other things there. Of course, there's tons of beautiful, beautiful food, but, you know, there's jams and sauerkraut and... <laughs> do, they have, do they have the people that make the, like, the... The, uh, Pigeon Cove for Men's was there. Oh, yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, they were there. Tatiana's treats, beautiful desserts. Um, Are they candle let's makers see. or anything like that? No, I didn't mm. see candle makers. I went through very Beam. fast, like I see, mm. like I told you, I went through very fast. But there was um, fresh goat cheese. Did oh. you see, did you see my little post about um, Diane Corliss? She's I did. No, I didn't read it though. Yeah, she's no longer our. Um, so she was there. She works for. She has a new path in life, um, minding goats and making cheese. She's working for a woman from um, Newbury, I think it is. So um, did you take the opportunity to, to invite her onto the podcast and bring some goat cheese for us to sample? <laughs> oh well, we. I you can, didn't do that. No, but I have her contact information. I certainly could do that. Well, as you know, kind of like oh. the producer here. <laughs> Well, you're not really a producer. No, not really. But no, but you, but, but like as a, a a community liaison. Right, I'll ask her. I'll ask because uh, she's really sweet, and she was so, she was just really took the lead last year with helping with the piping clovers on the beach. Did you know oh, that? Oh, she was a big. So she's she big she was a um she she was one of two Gloucester dog officer or you know animal control officers. Excuse oh. me. So she and Chief McCarthy were on the beach practically every morning, and if you called her, she would come, and she would help. To Take a shift. Yeah. As she, fill in. Well, no, she wasn't. A sh she was. Uh, she was working oh. as the dog officer, oh, as the animal control officer. But she was very, 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 very caring about the clovers and very interested in, you know, helping them survive. So, she's very. Very lovely person. I'm sorry. To sh I'm sorry. She's no longer. But goat cheese. Yeah. Okay. Goat Listen, cheese. Goat yeah, cheese. Goat cheese. Okay. I will get right on. That. I'm a big goat. I'm a big fan of goat cheese. Okay. Well, I didn't know that. We need to get some figs okay. and goat cheese. Okay. And make good figs uh, and do them on the on the on the smoker. Mm, okay. Smoke. Figs it's called it's called cheese. dancing goats. Have you heard Have you heard of that business? No? I think it's called dancing goats. No, but so we'll we will feature them. We'll, if okay. she wants to bring some goat okay. cheese for us, okay. we will we will talk about okay. it. So we right. always listen. Right. Right. No, I'm gonna make we, a we don't bang this drum enough. Right. If you have a product, if you, especially food, right? especially food, <laughs> and you want us to sample it and talk about it, you, have me your pen. you need to like bring some in <laughs> okay. and, and invite yourself onto the podcast. Get a hold of me, right. and and uh, Good Morning Gloucester at yahoo.com and invite yourself on. <laughs> And we will set you up to come in and 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 sample okay. your treats. All right. All right. See, now uh, I have a reason because I'll I'll tell her I posted her on the blog and would she you know and send her the link to the blog. The thing. We'll give her some press. press. We'll give her some publicity. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Figs stuffed with goat cheese. Figs uh, stuffed. Huge fan. Huge fan. <laughs> um, I, I didn't mention it at, the, at this at the top of the podcast, but I'm going to mention it right now. Cape Ann Community Cinema uh, sponsors the podcast in a way that they basically give. A uh, couple of uh, tickets for the move for the movie theater. Mm -hmm. That um, if anyone, if you share the podcast on Facebook and tag us in it, uh, you can uh, win two tickets to uh, a movie at Cape Bank Community Center. Do we have a winner this week? Uh, yes, we do. Let me see. Oh yeah, it's uh, Paula Ryan O'Brien. Oh, okay, Paula awesome, very nice. Yep, she's a winner from last week. Okay. She can come and uh, uh, pick up her tickets. Um, so we're going on to the plot. Oh, big, a big topic this past week, plastic bags.
bag ban was passed. Oh, yes. Were you th- so excited about that. I was not at the meet. You know what? This week is, was very difficult for me. It's my last week of getting all my gardens to bed. Put to so, bed, yeah. So when I get home... This is great for me. Because now I have more access to you to do midweek podcasts when things slow down at the oh wharf. I like that. So... What happens to me usually is I'm so delirious. I just fall into, I take a bath and fall into bed. So, and then Tom makes me dinner, which is really nice. God bless God. So, um, yeah, so I did not go, but I heard it was very, um, very, very good, solid vote, seven to one, um, and it passed. So, inc- uh, you know, just kudos to um, Melissa Cox and Greg Verga. Because I think it was Greg Verga who originally wrote the, um, oh, yeah? wrote wrote it, and then it was, um, and then Melissa, Melissa took Cox, the yeah, took the reins, and then we have Ainsley Smith, Eric Majors, One Ocean One Love, Jamie. Um, there's two other people on the Clean City Commission um, whose names I put it in a post. In the picture that I posted with the plastic bag yep. um, has the names of everybody in the Clean City Commission. Ah, nice. I believe Un- it's you know under the caption of the photo, so nice. Queen Gloucester Commission. Yeah, so we're very very blessed to have Ainsley and her crew there. We were talking a little bit um, off air about I was talking about it. I don't, I'm not sure if you were you were actually had excused yourself for a second. But I was talking to Stephanie who of the Harbor Voices uh, project about how um, there is a there's always resistance to change. Yeah. And there were yeah, quite, that's true. And, you know, so, and we had spoken about a couple examples. So there was some, this was not a unanimous thing originally. No. And there are some issues uh, that, like, uh, and it kept being brought up, like older folks downtown that don't have someone to necessarily bring them to the market. They go to the market themselves by foot and they need to carry the stuff back. Um, so paper bag may or may not be like an easy thing an easy, to, to sling it through their, uh, you know, put on M- their fingers and, and have arms, multiple right. bags right. to get home. Right. Right. But there are solutions. It's just a, more of an education thing yeah. and to get, uh, you know, uh, to get through like a reusable bags that you take from your house, that they're inexpensive right. and, and that they actually can carry more efficiently than the the the, the plastic because the handles the, the, rip on the plastic because the hand right the right. handles or something right. sharp right. pokes through right. and that stuff goes all over your right. car it's a it, or you have to double bag them those those reusable bags are very sturdy well, so once people I think that the point I'm trying to make is that I think that once these people that were kind of really against this because it's it's a change right. it is uh, a change. I think once they start using the reusable bags. They're going to see that actually, it's a, it's a lot easier for them to carry. Yeah. A lot less because those those straps on those bags are a little wider right. and less they painful. Do, they less cut into your skin. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so no, I agree, and I think it's just um, like smoking when they when they when in the fir- in the beginning of them saying that we're not going to be able to smoke in in restaurants and bars. Even in my head, way back then, I was saying. And I don't smoke. I, right. I can't stand smoke. Right. But I can, I can remember thinking in the very beginning yeah, times right, that, but, Jesus, this is kind of a, you know, uh, a personal, you know, they're just taking people's choice, rights right. away, you know, right. and stuff like right. that. Right. But now you can't, and I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way, even the ones that thought, like I did, that this is taking a person, right. someone's personal thing away, that you couldn't even imagine someone smoking in a restaurant right now. Right. 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 I mean, so, or think, on an airplane, right? And think of oh, I know. Remember, I mean, yeah. it used to be so horrible. Yeah. And um, but I think now I've now I've heard talk of people banning smoking on the beach, and at first I was like, well, I don't know if that really is cutting into personal, but I'll tell you something, I have many times set up on Pavilion Beach to film the uh, greasy pole walkers, get all set up, make a little niche for myself, you know. There's like. 10,000 people on Pavilion Beach. I'm all ready. And somebody lights up a big cigar right standing right next to me. And I'm like choking the whole time. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's like, I don't know what's, you know, what is what is right and what is wrong. And That's you know. kind of an extreme situation though, isn't yeah. it? Because like you're set up. 
Right. So yeah, in yeah. that position, that is like focal on the thing. So for you, it's an inconvenience to have to move. But wait, but think of all the people sandwiched together on Good Harbor Beach or whatever beach it is. You know what I mean? You put your beach blanket down, you got all set up, you got your kids and whatever. You know, I'm just thinking... <sighs> I'm thinking, what's the next step going to be? And then will people say in 10 years, yeah. like, will yeah. they say like, That's oh, fair. can you imagine people used to smoke on the beach and leave their cigarette butts there? And, you know, I don't know. It's I a mean, fair point. It's a yeah. fair point. You yeah. know? I, I don't know. I, I don't know what's going to happen with that. But it's yeah. interesting to think about. Yeah. Because so, right. there, there are a lot worse things that you could do, too. So Yeah. Um, you brought this up uh, as a pop-up bookshop. From the owner of Andover Bookstore and Cabot Books in Beverly. Yes, yeah, so I I have never been to Cabot Bookstore, but I've been to Andover Bookstore many times because it's in an area where I have some clients, and it's a beautiful, fantastic, fun, interesting, packed full of wonderful books bookstore, the Andover Bookstore. So the one in the owner has now is doing a little test, a little I think it's about six week pilot. To see if um, Rockport can K Band can support um, this new bookstore, and it's right on Main Street. One A Main Street is the address. It's the brown shingled building with the green um, trim, the sort of like 1920s green trim. And um, so, unfortunately, I can't remember the gentleman's name. But what, is, um, what can you say? What, what businesses are to the left or right of it for more for perspective? Yeah, no, I can't off the top of my head. Just Across the street from it? Is yeah, it go, is it close to the square? Yeah, I don't know. We have to Google it. So Google. Let me Google have you map it. Yeah, no, I haven't. Oh, okay. No, so, it just okay, opened. So now I understand right, why. It just, no, it just opened on Saturday. Okay, I can. I'll, yeah. I'll Google map okay. it. You can keep yeah. talking. Oh, okay. Google map. Yeah. So it. Um, I think it's. I think it would be great if we could all, you know, support because I know many, many people really miss the miss Toad Hall, miss the idea of Toad Hall. So it'd be great to have a, another community bookstore on Main Street in Rockport. You know, I think especially in the summertime, like a in, in Vineyard Haven on Martha's Vineyard, there's just an incredible bookstore right on Main Street in Vineyard Haven, and it. And if it's done really, if a bookstore's done really well, it just becomes like mecca. Like you bring your kids to load up on their books for the summer, and um, you know, I think um, it's more of a it's a natural cedar shingle. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. it's um it's right next to the village silversmith. Um, okay, going yeah. up towards yes, going uh, up towards, towards Shalinlu, and, and so it's on the it's on the right, right. It's on the right, right. going uh, yeah. going away from Dark Square, very close, diagonally across from Dark Square, Dark Square. and across the street from. Uh, La Provence and the tu, uh, Tuzinski Gallery. Yeah, and that's a great little corner there. Great little shops. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. The very, very uh, it's very centrally located. Oh so, yes, yeah, absolutely so, is. Yeah. If he's gonna, I wonder if he's if that's where his permanent location would be if he decided to stop. I mean, if it's going to be hard to decide to have a bookstore there because after what Christmas, building. yeah, after Christmas, right? Then. Everything just is dead for a couple months, right? So and to, I would imagine that it'd be very difficult yeah. to pay a rent in that location. Yeah. But who knows? Right. I don't know. The building is beautifully restored architecturally. It has yeah. copper gutters, uh, kind of a curved, unbelievable. It's curved, fr curved front, right? Yes, yeah. it is a beautiful, beautiful building. Yeah. Uh, they did a magnificent job uh, restoring that space. Um, so. Right there. Well, so everybody, you know, when you're downtown Rockport, get your children's books there and your, you know. Be it, nice to, to it'd be support, really nice yeah. to it would be really nice to have a bookstore back. Shop local. Yeah. I think, you know something, I have, I'm going to mention this and I'm talking completely out of my ass, but I believe that this coming week is Shop Local Week or it's coming very it's soon. coming very soon. I, I know I, Pauline uh, from Pauline's Books uh, has... Just got quickly. Uh, go Pauline's ahead. Pauline Bresnahan. Uh, yeah, Pauline yeah. Bresnahan from Pauline's uh, gifts. Yeah. Not books. Pauline's, Pauline's gifts. gifts. Yeah, right. Pauline's gifts. Uh, shop local is. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, is it is it usually the week of? Um, does it usually begin the week of Thanksgiving? Because this is Thanksgiving week coming up. Thursday's Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's probably right around the same time as. Um, I don't know what the hell it is. I, I believe it's soon. And if it is, uh, I'm going to ask Pauline Bresnahan to, to send in a press release for us so we can post it. Post all that. And also, um, President Gloucester has opened, and they I think they have beautiful, beautiful gifts there. 
mm. local craftsmen and artists just make exquisite gifts and they're there did you do a post about that no i haven't because someone i i read something about i'll do it um well I, I mentioned that they were open but i didn't um i haven't been down to take pictures yet but i will this week and what were are they they're at uh they're opening in the lit house again? yeah they're in the lit house again so go back i did put a little post up not a big one Okay. Not with pictures yet. I am planning to do one with pictures and also do cover Alexandra's bread because she always has wonderful gifts there at Christmas time. Yep. So, and then Backyard Growers has a new space. So there's that little triumvirate. A new space or expanded I mean, a, space? An expanded, renovated space. So I mm -hmm. want to do that little, you know, trio down there of gift shops. There gifts you go. and wonderful things for Christmas. All right, Gloucester. One hour on the dot, Kim. Oh, one hour like... Point zero zero zero. <laughs> so, How amazing great. is that? That's great. Cluster Cash two fifty three is in the books. Thanks for listening, y'all. Mm.